I've been teaching guitar for about 10 years, um, since, yeah, since 2002, and I've been teaching guitar on YouTube since, I think, September of 2010, so um, almost two years, and I've just been realizing that, I mean, I've, I've known from the beginning of teaching on YouTube guitar, it's a lot different than teaching in person, because in person, like, I get to see exactly where the person's at, and they can ask me questions, and, you know, a lot of times, like, when people ask for a song, like, I have about 10 minutes to figure it out in a lesson, because uh, my private lessons are an hour, so, like, someone will be like, oh, let's learn, I want to learn this Nirvana song, or this Red Hot Chili Pepper song, and I really only have about 10 minutes to figure something out, how to teach it. Because let's say I spend an hour doing it, it would be like um, a total waste of time. So I've gotten pretty good at being okay with not being perfect and then sort of like improving and also finding the best tabs or videos that are available. So in person I have that luxury, but um, it's just different with YouTube because a lot of times people ask me for a song they want to learn and I've never heard it and I'll just... Um, I mean, my, my philosophy is, like, I'm not going to spend, like, two weeks figuring out the song perfect, so, like, I just look up the tab, and I'm good at finding the best tabs that are available. A lot of times the tabs aren't accurate, so then I use my ear. Um, or I watch covers of people playing it, or if possible, the best is, like, if the band has done, like, an acoustic set of it. Sometimes you can really see their hands, or sometimes when it's live you can see their hands. But, I mean, I also know, like, I'm not going to spend two weeks trying to figure out a song perfect. Um, and a lot of times, too, like, it takes a while for your brain, like, when you're learning a song, to really get stuff down perfect. But when you're teaching on YouTube, it's different, because, like, I'll do, I'll do, like, a lesson for a song, and then um, put it out there. But then all of a sudden, since it's a video, it's like, I can't respond to to it. Like a lot of people on YouTube just like and dislike stuff and they don't leave comments. Or if they leave comments, they're not like um, specific comments. Like like if someone was if like like with my real students in real life, like sometimes they'll start out with a really vague comment, but it won't make any sense. Like you'll just I'll be like, "Well, I don't really know what that would mean." But then they have a more specific question, they just don't know how to articulate it. Um, or, I mean, like, sometimes my students, like, you know, they've heard the song a thousand times, and they, they might not be as good at guitar as I am, but they, and in figuring songs out, but they've heard the song so many times, they'll be like, I don't think that sounds right, and then, so then it will kind of drive that process of figuring out more accurately. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm making this video just to kind of explain how... I think it's interesting the difference between doing stuff in real life and having that human interaction and then what I feel like is going on on YouTube where it's kind of got this buffer. Like a lot of people I've talked to have kind of described YouTube as being on the freeway in, in a way, like or when you're driving in your car because it's like there's kind of this protective shield around things. Um, also I think on YouTube like the whole liking and disliking somehow, like, um, I don't know, so, I don't know like, I kind of wish people were more forced into leaving comments. Like, sometimes I've thought about turning the like and dislike off on my videos, but, like, my videos aren't that important. But I think it'd be interesting for, like, videos that are more controversial to not just have this like-dislike thing, where, like, before you even see the before you even see the video, you kind of see, like, oh, it's a bunch of green or a bunch of red. And most people already have their personal bias before you um, even approach that thing. So anyways, I'm just kind of talking off the top of my head just about some sort of differences I've noticed between teaching in person and on YouTube. And I think, I think mainly I'm making this video just to um, sort of, <laughs> sort of ask I guess I want to know more, like, what would be helpful to people. Like, if someone finds this video and is learning guitar, 
like, I would be curious to get more feedback on, like, what's... Because, like, when I learned guitar, there was no YouTube, and there weren't really even tabs online. So, you either had to, like, buy songbooks, or you had to just use your ear to figure stuff out. And then tabs started coming out, and it really changed things. Um, so, I guess I just am trying to get more feedback on, like, what's helpful and what's not helpful. Um, with learning guitar, and also I guess I'm also kind of interested in what people think about YouTube, especially, I, mean, I guess just anybody, because I think it's a way different world than than pre-YouTube, and especially like, I mean the internet definitely changed a lot of how we socialize, um, and the way that we're able to share stuff. I think that there's really, really amazing things about it, and I'm happy that we have that we have this change in society because of technology, but I think it's also, like I said, like sometimes there's this sort of um, inability to have a dialogue. Like you just put a video out there and then it's like kind of there, like, like, like sometimes you're in a bad mood when you are doing something and that kind of comes out or maybe you're like not that sharp one day, and like you say a few stupid things, and people latch on to it. Like the types of videos I do, like guitar lessons, aren't very controversial. I think it's even more, I mean, because it's just guitar songs, although I have been surprised how nasty some comments are that I've gotten over the years. Um, and I think a lot of that is just like young people or immature people. Because um, I've also gotten like some really like thoughtful comments, like, no, I don't mean like, I mean, I've gotten some nice comp compliments and stuff, and that's nice, but it's also cool to get like detailed questions and stuff that's that's more like, that more provokes better responses. Like I've gotten some really long um, messages about guitar and kind of like where the person's at, what's hard for them, what's not hard. Like that's like eye-opening to me, because like, Lots of stuff that I'm doing, I'm trying to kind of imagine I'm teaching my real life students. And like I said, sometimes that doesn't work so well because, like, in real life, um, I mean, I usually spend about 10 minutes figuring a song out. I probably spend longer for my, I do spend longer for my videos unless the song's easy. I usually try to get it as down as well as possible, but, like, it's also, I mean, it's not like, like with some Radiohead songs, those were songs I spent like a long time learning. And I don't make lessons for them because um, cause a lot of those songs have already been done a ton of times. There's, it doesn't seem that like there's that much of a point. I haven't gotten re requests for them. But like I used to listen to those songs like th tons of times and just, you know, like really try to get them perfect. So I understand that sort of desire. But. Um, I don't know, I also think that it's like, um, I also think it's healthier, and I notice, like, my students who have a more kind of attitude where they're, they're okay with things not being perfect, and they do their best, and then they improve the next time, like, I think this is how life kind of works, like, it's better to have that attitude, instead of getting angry and emotional, it's kind of like, um, well, this is the best we can do now, given our knowledge, and there's probably a way to improve it. And with music, like, a lot of people want to play, they want to imitate other people. Um, I don't have that desire at all anymore, like, but I had that desire a lot when I started guitar, and I know a lot of people have that desire, and I think it's a rational thing to want to play, like, exactly like somebody else when you're first starting. But then after you play for a while, especially you've just been around music for a while, you start to realize like how songs actually come into existence, like, I mean a lot of the, the bands, like they were influenced and like really cared about playing stuff perfect, but most bands don't, at a certain point you start to want to make your own music, um, or to play music more creatively, like that's why a lot of bands that when they do covers they like to change them. Because they're not. Their goal isn't to 
preserve like the note for note thing. It's like more like to think about what that style was, kind of the essence of that band, whatever that means to that person, and then kind of adapt it. Um, so anyways, it's kind of just a ramble, but I was hoping just to kind of maybe get some thoughts out of myself about what I've been experiencing with YouTube, because it's, I mean, this is all like a foreign, um, this is a new technology for everybody, and I've noticed like people on YouTube, like the communication style seems to have changed even the last two years I've been using it. Um, I see like a little more subtlety to how people are communicating with it. And I think like with all of our social media and the ways we can share information, it's just going to be interesting to see how we get used to kind of being ourselves through a medium. Because I've actually been, I've definitely been able to, to understand like the media differently and like some of the things that you would go through. I mean, just from my small experience, like with guitar lessons, which is not even close to like having to report controversial things like I can't imagine having to do political stories or really important stories that might have huge effects depending on how people think about them and then having to put yourself to put those statements out there and let them kind of just like rattle around without you being able to do anything about it or for like artists or anybody who puts like a one of their creations out there and then all these people respond to it and it's like way outside your control um, I think we're all kind of getting that, you know, we all have that now because of, because we're all kind of, because social media is actually a medium that we're like going through versus like more face-to-face -face interactions where, I mean, the, like there's more like a real-time ability to communicate and like update your opinions or get feedback. So basically, I guess I'm just asking for other people's opinions on some of the stuff I was saying, if, if you find this video, or ways that I could improve, like what's hard for you with guitar, because, like, I, like, aside from, like, these detailed letters I get, like, likes are nice, you know, like, I get a lot of likes on some of my videos, or dislikes, and I'm kind of like, well, maybe that, you know, maybe that's a sign I'm doing things right, or maybe not, like, it depends on how many views the video, video has, because if it has, like, ten views, and it has, like, five likes, like, that's only 10 people that have seen it, whereas if it has, like, 80,000 views and, like, you know, like, a lot of likes and a few dislikes, I'm kind of like, oh, that's kind of a sign that that was probably a good lesson, but I don't really know, like, how, whereas if you get, like, comments and feedback, it's helpful. Um, also, I'd be curious, like, people's thoughts on, like, this desire to imitate like when you're learning music cuz like as i said like most like i don't have that desire at all anymore and i remember like when i was learning guitar um i mean i do have that desire like when i want to progress or when i'm teaching like cuz i understand other people have that desire but like i'm more thinking like kind of what is the style of this thing and like what kind of chords are they using to achieve the mood so it's a little more like abstracted but sometimes that gets to um too vague, so it's like really good sometimes to switch into that mode where you want to be exact, just for the sake of learning new things and getting better at guitar. So you're not kind of in this more vague place with music, but I remember like when I was first learning guitar, like I was around a lot more advanced guitar players, and they definitely like just didn't have the same questions I did. Like at that time, I really wanted to like learn Radiohead songs and like be super exact about it because those songs are pretty hard and I wanted to know like all the chord names and my teachers would be like well you know you don't need to know like the names of those chords like just just learn it and like and they seem so relaxed with it and like they didn't really care even though they could play stuff perfect if they tried like they could approach it but at the same time they were kind of telling me like don't don't get like too locked in that mindset like it could be they were more like trying to challenge me to be able to learn how to improvise a little bit and more understand what was happening like in a larger sense like oh here's what the chords are and then sometimes getting specific and it was funny too because with a lot of them like 
they would they would care about that perfection like more for the genres that like they grew up with. So it's like kind of like when you're younger, I think you like get really into that mindset. Or like for some of them like um with some like jazz songs, they might have some of that attitude, but usually it was the songs they were super super into where they like somehow had like kind of like associated the song with their um personality like somehow it like had become part of them and it was like they wanted to spread it perfectly because it was part of their it was part of like who they were inside or something I don't know if that makes sense but um like for example like Moss Mouse was my favorite band for a long time I put up a couple Moss Mouse lessons and I got like a comment like this is totally wrong and normally like I get comments like that and I'm like well okay like because a lot of songs aren't like I don't have some emotional connection to whereas like in the case of the Stramamine song like I don't really care um, if it's totally wrong like that's the best I could do given my knowledge so you know like I'm like alright like I'd like to improve it but because like I had have so many emotional connections to Modest Mouse like even before I played guitar or like was just learning like they had a huge like kind of emotional effect on me um, and then I listen to their songs so many times and like I can hear like kind of hear all their songs like if you just gave me the name I know pretty much what that song sounds like and I can remember like where I was when I was like and what I was doing when I was listening to that music um, it's like somehow that desire for perfection and like it makes more sense within I think that's partly what prompted this video um, so I don't know. I'd be curious if anyone finds this video, kind of, if any of what I'm saying kind of sparks some thoughts, because I don't really have, like, a exact point I'm trying to make. Um, but I would be curious to know what other people think, like, especially if you're making YouTube videos yourself, how you feel, like, about the experience you've had. Um, if you haven't made any YouTube videos, I'd be curious what your experience is of YouTube. And I would highly recommend people who haven't made any YouTube videos, like, that actually kind of are who you are in some way, like, to try it, because it's a pretty powerful experience, and it kind of shows you some things about the world that is hard to know. Like, if you're actually doing something that's that's within something you know about, like whether it's talking about your opinions or maybe sharing a skill you have. Because, um, like, let's say like I uploaded a video that was like, you know, just like a, a song by a band. I mean, it would still be kind of cool, but there'd be like such a gap between who I am and that song. Um, I think it would be a little different. It'd be like it's not really sharing yourself. Whereas if you put yourself out there, it's kind of a different experience. Because I remember like when I first started u using YouTube, it felt like everything was more kind of like um, outside of myself. And now, because I've had an experience of like putting myself out there for a long time on YouTube, and even though it's just guitar lessons, I don't really share like who, what I actually think about the world and other topics. Um, it's just, it's made me realize, like, when I'm interacting with content on YouTube, I'm, I'm, I can see, like, the people more, like, who's behind the video, like, I have more sympathy for that, like, and I might not have sympathy for what they're saying or doing, but I do understand, like, there's a, there's a complex person behind a lot of this content, and so it just kind of, changes your relationship to it a little bit and again like what I'm doing is not that significant but um, cause I've been pretty shocked actually like some of these younger people who really say what they think on YouTube I think that's um, like a lot of people are like total haters on these people and like I find it pretty strange because a lot of what these people are doing is a lot of times like really one of the most admirable things, I think, is to actually say what you think, but not in a, like, there's some people that are ridiculous, they're just stating, like, unthought-out opinions, but some people are being very thoughtful and, like, actually 
explaining like the complex layers of what they think and maybe like doubting themselves and like asking for like I don't know I'm just surprised what I've seen it's almost like people are kind of like journaling through like these video blogs and it's definitely a new form like wasn't it really wasn't possible pre I think YouTube came out in 2006 so that's a very short time this has been even a real possibility to share videos. And I notice YouTube has that live video thing now. And that will be interesting to see like I like I don't really have like it's, I don't really have like that many people who would want me to do that, I don't think. I mean maybe they would. But I've seen some channels where like they have people have tons of subscribers and like all this activity and um that live interaction could be really interesting like how that bringing that dimension in would change things but there's also still the mediation because like right now if this was live I assume I like and let's say like I was talking to like a hundred people or let's say even crazier like you were talking to like a thousand people or ten thousand people like in a way it's kinda like you would be like giving a speech on a stage like when you're a lecturer uh, and then maybe like I don't know how that would like what would be the best way to like let people ask comments because it would be crazy if everybody could comment at the same time it would be kind of like too much um, of a flood especially like these people who have like millions of subscribers and let's say they have like a thousand people watching their live thing um, and they're supposed to be interacting with their with their subscribers or fans or whatever so that's about it I don't know, I just wanted to, like, I've just been having a lot of thoughts about this topic and these kind of topics of, like, specifically teaching guitar, but then just kind of, like, YouTube in general. Um, so, I don't know, if anyone finds this video or, like, you've been watching my videos for a while, like, this might mean more to you, but I'd be curious, like, if, if anyone has some thoughts. Okay, that's it. Bye.